Welcome to Fan of History. Today I'm gonna try to tell you about the Stockholm bloodbath in 1520 AD. In a very brief overview, I'll be doing a lot of work about the bloodbath, and he this is the short introduction. So, on November 6th to 8th in 1520 AD, there were a great party in Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. It was a celebration of the coronation of the Danish king Christian II as also the king of Sweden. And everyone who mattered in Sweden were there, except one. It was very much the Red Wedding of Sweden, if you know your Game of Thrones. Because at the end of the party, the doors were locked and the trials began. Everyone, with a few exceptions, were guilty and the sentence was death. So, on November 8th to 10th in 1520 AD, there was a mass execution, one of the most horrible mass executions in European history before the 20th century. Two bishops, the leading noblemen of Sweden loyal to the house of Sture, three majors of Stockholm, minor noblemen, uh, the Stockholm City Council, random burghers, some servants, and uh, this is one of the leading noblemen on the picture. He is Erik Johansson Vasa. And his, his ex execution will matter especially. Uh, the lead executioner was a German officer called Jürgen Humuth. He sent an invoice to the Danish king for 82 deaths. And he would know, wouldn't he? So the executions were done by on order of Christian II of Denmark. He was elected as the heir to the Swedish throne in 1497, but the Swedes were not that happy to let him take the position. Resistance to his rule had been led by Sten Sture the Younger. Christian attacked Sweden in 1520 with a very modern army of the time, nothing like what Sweden could resist him with. He also defeated Sten Sture at the Ice Battle of Åsunden Lake. He then besieged Stockholm for five months. He won Stockholm by promising mercy to the besieged and to all who would resist him. And then he executed them all in the bloodbath. And he tried to avoid the blame for this execution. We'll talk more about that. But the intention of the bloodbath was to put the final word at the union of Sweden and Denmark had to continue. And that was his reason to do it. So uh, we will talk about why this happened, what the 82 people were accused of, who they were that were executed, what happened to that one guy who weren't there to be executed, who was really the villain, who was behind this, and what role does Archbishop Gustav Trolle of Sweden play, and what was the long-term effects of the bloodbath on the countries of Sweden and Denmark, on the union between them, and um, this will lead directly to the end of the medieval period in Sweden. So I will be doing a lot of work on the bloodbath of Stockholm. Uh, this is because I'm working on a TV documentary. I become involved in this project, it's great. But I will use the Fan of History channel. I will do episode on the sources of the bloodbath. I may go into depth on specific characters in the bloodbath. There are several interesting characters, like Christina of the Golden Star. Um, I will talk about the aftermath of the bloodbath. Uh, the bloodbath does lead into the story of Sweden's most interesting king, the evil, tyrannical landfather of Sweden, Gustav Vasa. I have earlier written a whole novel on the major... There were several rebellions against Gustav Vasa, and in 1542-43, that's 20 years after the bloodbath, there is a major rebellion called Dackefejden, and this is what I wrote a novel about. You can support the Fan of History project on patreon.com slash fanofhistory, or subscribe, like, and share these things. So I hope you will take this ride with me, and let me know if you want to know more about 16th century Sweden. Or if this is not just interesting, I should go back to covering Assyria. Thank you for watching.